Hi everybody. Today my topic is plastic bending of beams. So to understand this concept, first I am taking a beam. It is the length of beam subjected to a bending moment m and this beam cross section it has an axis of symmetry and also let the beam be subjected to bending in the plane of symmetry now if bending moment is small so the length of the beam will bend elastically bent elastically it means the stress and the strain vary linearly across the section we can see here the stress distribution like this this is elastic neutral axis and and it produces in this distribution it produces here say it is a sigma this is stress sigma equal to my by i and this sigma it is at a distance of y from the neutral axis now if we increase m there will be a stage where the maximum direct stress at the point farthest from this neutral axis i mean here it is equal to sigma y so surely the corresponding value of m we can call it as a yield moment and this m y equal to sigma y i divided by y 1 so we can write like this now if the moment is increased what is happening next we can see here stress diagram i mean distribution this diagram it shows that yield stress is attained in the top fiber look at this this is the plastic zone and from here to here this is elastic zone now with a further increase of moment yield stress now it will reach in the bottom also so this is plastic zone this is plastic zone in between these two these part is elastic zone now we want to increase i mean to increase moment again and again to see what is the situation comes for this plastic zone so from our sense it says that if we increase the moment surely this plastic zone will move towards in the center neutral axis and this plastic zone will move towards the center i mean in the position of the neutral axis so automatically this elastic zone it will be reduced to a negligible size and the beam section it will be more or less completely plastic 
So let's move in the next slide to understand this concept more deeply. So to understand the plastic zone concept, let's take a stress strain curve. What is happening here? As I said, if the bending moment is further increased, the strain I mean this epsilon y at the extremity y1 of the section you can see it here it increases I mean epsilon y it is increasing it exceeds the yield strain however due to plastic yielding the stress remain constant. Seeing the positions here, we understand that the stress remain constant and it is equal to sigma y. Let's take a section mentioning this. I mean this plastic zone and this plastic zone look at this it's very clear now this part it is plastic zone this is also plastic zone in between this there is a de it means depth of elastic core as i said if we do increase or with further increases in the bending moment this elastic core it will be reduced to a negligible size but here it is not negligible there is a big portions of this elastic zone Here I have marked also fully plastic zone and this is also representation of the stress. This area, it is also within the fully plastic zone and this is also fully plastic zone. So our target increasing more moments or increasing moments what is the situation comes for this elastic zone so let's move in the next slide to see that So what was our discussion? It was if the bending moment continues to increase, yield will spread from outer fibers inward until the two zone of the yield met. This is the situation. Two zone. I mean plastic zone meet so there is no elastic zone here so this cross section we can say it is a fully plastic and the value of the ultimate moment MP this plastic moment can be calculated in terms of yield stress sigma y and here 
I wrote that MP is a pure bending moment. The total direct load on the beam section must be zero. It is very important conditions. So the neutral axis in the fully plastic conditions divides the section into two equal areas and the resultant tension and compressions it forms a couple which is equal to ultimate moments so let's first take this one sigma ya1 equal to sigma ya2 because here if we look at closely we can see that beam section above the plastic neutral axis it is subjected to uniform compressive stress sigma y while the below neutral axis the stress is tensile and it is equal to sigma y and here our area at the top we considered it is a1 and the bottom it is a2 that is why i have written here sigma y a1 sigma y a2 equal to this this situation so what you can find here actually now here i can write exactly a1 equal to a2 also another point total cross section area if it is a surely then we can write a1 equal to a2 equal to a by 2 simple calculations so what we find here the plastic neutral axis it divides the beam section into two equal areas and the plastic moment m p we can find by taking moments of the resultant of the compressive and tensile stresses about this neutral axis very simple and the stress resultant it acts at c1 and c2 c1 in this area a1 c2 for in this area a2 that's why we can write sigma y a1 and this distance also because this y1 y2 bar are respectively the distance of the centroid of the compression and tension area from the neutral axis and it is in fully plastic conditions so easily we can write mp equal to sigma y a1 y1 bar plus sigma y a2 y2 bar so what next with simplifications we can write sigma y and a1 a2 means a by 2 so surely we can replace it by a by 2 and in the bracket remaining is y1 bar plus y2 bar now what we can do more with these equations let's move in the next slide to see So we brought the same equation what we had in the previous slide mp equal to sigma y a by 2 y1 bar plus y vector y2 bar so what you can write with these equations see here mp equal to sigma y zp what is zp zp we are assuming this part is zp 
and already I mentioned here ZP means plastic modulus of the cross section. So this total part it is related with the plastic situation. Now if we think that the maximum moment which a section can carry without exceeding the yield stress in that situation we can write my i mean yield moment equal to sigma y z e what is z e elastic modulus of the cross sections so we got plastic moment and yield moments using these two we can find the ratio so what that ratio means let's see i am considering this ratio as a shape factor mp divided by my so what we are using this sigma y z p here sigma y z e so using these two i am getting z p by z e so surely seeing these two i can say that this ratio basically it depends on the shape of the cross section so i can write easily solely a function of the geometry of the beam cross section as well there is another important points i want to mention that the shape factor is always greater than unity these are very important points and that's all for today thanks for watching